tuberculosis used to be called Captain Among These Men of Death. It's experiencing a resurgence in Europe. Disease versus antibiotics. Which side is winning this particular battle? Perhaps the captain hasn't retreated. And which side will win the war? Join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. Most EU countries have not implemented the current World Health Organization guidelines for the treatment of tuberculosis. The lack of registration of new drugs is among the most pressing barriers. Consequently, antimicrobial resistance in general is becoming a pressing global health issue, accounting for nearly 1.5 million deaths in 2019, with the potential to exceed the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic in the near future. Despite its severity, antimicrobial resistance remains relatively unknown outside specialist circles. It occurs when pathogens develop resistance to drugs designed to combat them. The process is natural, but accelerated due to the overuse and misuse of antibiotics in humans, animals and agriculture. Exposure to these drugs allows pathogens to evolve making standard treatments ineffective and leading to the emergence of so-called superbugs. The consequences of antimicrobial resistance are substantial, treating infections becomes difficult, while also increasing the risks associated with medical procedures such as cancer treatment and organ transplants. Additionally, access to existing antibiotics is uneven worldwide. In some regions, people do not have access to safer antibiotics, and are instead prescribed more resistant alternatives. Tackling AMR requires a unified approach across all global sectors. Farmers must use antibiotics wisely, doctors must avoid over-prescribing them, and pharmaceutical companies must manage production waste to prevent environmental contamination. Governments have a key role to play in implementing policies that support these changes. Experts highlight progress in some countries, but warn of stagnation. Nonetheless, individuals can also play a role in the fight against AMR. Basic hygiene practices such as hand washing can greatly help in preventing infections. While prescribed antibiotics, patients should strictly follow the doctor's recommendations, avoiding the temptation to save or share drugs. Our guest today is Dr. Marcin Równicki from the Microbiota Lab at the Medical University here in Warsaw. Welcome to the program. Welcome. Good morning. Um, let's start with tuberculosis, TB. Um, it has a resurgence in Europe. Um, is this true and why? It is true. It's not that significant as it is believed. However, uh, the numbers of tuberculosis cases are increasing, especially in Poland. And in Poland, it is connected uh, mostly to the uh, migrants from Ukraine, where, where uh, the, the burden of, of tuberculosis is higher than in Poland, especially due to the war and, in general, the, the poverty and the whole situation yes. with, with the war. And. Um Tuberculosis throughout history has been, a, has been known as a great killer. Um, so the idea of us finding antibiotics to, to combat tuberculosis is a temporary uh, ceasefire, I suppose, in, in that battle. Yes, however, uh, currently we, we have some medications that tuberculosis can be treated with, although there are uh, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis and extensively drug resistant tuberculosis which are irresponsive to the known drugs, the, the first line drugs. And the problem are these two phenotypes, so these two types of, of tuberculosis, the multi-drug resistant and extensively drug resistant tuberculosis, which luckily there are in mi minority in Poland. Um. When did tuberculosis become identifiable as tuberculosis? And when did uh, antibiotics become identifiable as antibiotics? We hear that TB was a, a kind of, um, it was called the artist d disease in the 19th century up, up in the great attics, um, attacked the, 
disease attack the lung, lungs. Uh, poor people, um, Chopin, for example, died from TB. Um, when did tuberculosis actually become tuberculosis as we would know it yeah. today? So it was in uh, 19th century. Robert Koch, the German microbiologist, identified the, the bacterium, the mycobacterium tuberculosis, uh, which he was granted Nobel Prize after that. Uh, and the very first antibiotic was discovered in 1928 by Alexander Fleming. However, it was not effective against tuberculosis. So the first antibiotic discovered that could have been used to uh, to treat tuberculosis was streptomycin in 1944. So there is like 16 years gap between identifying the pathogen and to introduction of first anti-tuberculosis uh, antibiotic. And what's the period of uh, the bi antibiotic actually winning against the disease? It does it have a, uh, a finite number of years where it has a superiority and then uh, the, the resistance mm -hmm. becomes uh, is decreased, and or the or the pathogen, the the, the, the disease mutates. Do we have a, a period of victory, of a glow yeah. of victory? It was the first five years after introduction of streptomycin. So the first resistant mutants to streptomycin were reported in uh, early 1950s. So around five six years after introduction of uh, streptomycin. So we had like five years of waning time and then the, develop, the, the resistance showed up. And this is a natural process, isn't, uh, is it not where the, the disease is cleverer than we think? And yes. It mutates and overcomes the resistance? Yes, it's natural and uh, in t tuberculosis, uh, in mycobacterium tuberculosis, it works a little bit different than in other bacteria. Uh, because mycobacterium, it doesn't have this horizontal gene transfer, so it doesn't spread resistance between each other. So instead of this, mycobacterium mutates uh, oftenly, uh, which helps them to overcome the, the antibiotic activity and also the, the structure of the bacterium of the uh, cell envelope is different than than it's uh, with different bacteria so the the structure that protects bacterium mm, from antibiotics uh, it's much tougher and thicker than than with other bacteria so this is also a problem how to how to uh, how to incorporate the antibiotic inside the bacteria yeah um, the the cost of drugs today is uh, prohibitive, almost prohibitively expensive. Is this the same with the, the tuberculosis uh, vaccines or drugs? So Why? It, it is uh, in terms of drugs. F the first reason is because current uh, antibiotics, car currently known antibiotics, are, let's say, enough to prevent or to uh, limit to control the the current tuberculosis, uh, the vaccine uh, it's one, one. There is one vaccine currently in clinical trials uh, in countries that uh, suffers uh, the most with uh, with tuberculosis in South in in Africa. Uh, but the problem is that the uh, the costs of uh, developing uh, the whole the whole antibiotic, so from discovery to uh, to clinical trials, it's not equal to the profit that you can get from from the market. Are there any um, ways to tame, for want of a better word, to tame this disease in Europe? Are there any non-drug uh, medicines, for example? The uh, cholera was almost eradicated by drinking water, purifying drinking water. Is are there are there any general um, remedies that a society can adopt? Old, yes, old style, old school remedies. Yeah, actually, the very first remedy uh, for the tuberculosis was sending sick people to rest cures or sanatorias 
So we should do the same, but not not necessarily with sick people. But we should go to to uh, to the nature, to breathe fresh air, eat good good uh, quality food, to to boost our immune system. Second thing is to uh, isolate people, to isolate people that are that have tuberculosis especially at the beginning uh, of the infection, so they do not spread it around. Uh, so these are two the most important things that we as a society can, can do. Yes, yeah, so when, when, when we remember all the literature and the, the, the films and movies about people going to the spa, taking a rest cure, that's that kind of thing. Um, uh, you mentioned this thing about the immune system. Are, is our, do you think that we have a, an over-reliance on antibiotics as a first to go uh, to uh, medicine? Should we, uh, and does this have a detrimental effect on our own resist, building up our own resistance against disease? Yes, uh, so first of all, people think that antibiotics are mostly used to treat infections, but it's not like that they used to prevent the infection in surgical procedures mm -hmm. and uh, on daily basis we don't think that way and when we, we when we feel sick we go to doctor and if we get an antibiotic uh, we are happy even though it's sometimes viral infection like a placebo almost yeah that that's the truth but this uh, this causes more damage first to our body, then to society, as it uh, helps to uh, helps bacteria to develop new resistance me mechanisms, new, new uh, resistant bacteria uh, shows up. And also, antibiotics are toxins in general. So they, they are toxic to, uh, not only to bacteria, but they can also be toxic to our body. It's ha happened to, to our uh, hepatotoxicity. So they also can damage our bodies. Is the, uh, is the preponderance of antibiotics, uh, has that gone too far in society, do you think? What's your take on that as a general Yeah, in Poland it does, I think. From my experience and talks to other people from other countries, it is not that uh, common to take antibiotics in Western U Europe. Uh, however, what I know in Eastern Europe, Eastern from Poland, uh, they can buy antibiotics without any prescription. So you go to the drugstore, you want antibiotics, yes, here it goes. Yeah. So uh, we are in the middle of this, uh, of this crisis, let's say, so, or, or of, of this situation. So and is this a corporate dominance of the, of the what they call big farmers, of, of, the, of the pharmaceutical market? How do you, or is this our own uh, fear as a, as a human being against disease that we buy, we think we're buying an insurance policy when we buy more and more antibiotics? I think it's mostly like society I, I'm not sure about big pharma. Big, most of big pharma, they are not interested in antibiotics, so because it's not profitable for yeah. them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's mostly. I believe it's mostly so, so society. We have to uh, come to an end, uh, Dr. Marcin Ruvnitsky. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. I think it's worthwhile to, to mention that the, in H. G. Wells's book War of the Worlds, Alien Invasion, it's the microbes and the bacteria which killed the world. So, yeah. so uh, thank you very much, thank you very for much. coming along. Uh, that's it. That's all we have time for today. Do join us again for How We Got Here.